Emergency supports your immune system. A blast of immune support. Try Airborne. Emergency has more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Airborne. It has two times more vitamin C than emergency. Emerge and see. Contrary to the claims of big wellness companies that sell products like Emergency, Airborne, and other supplements, taking vitamin C after you are already sick does nothing to improve your symptom duration or severity. It still does not really work if you regularly take it, even starting before you're sick, and I'll show you those data. These companies put vague claims like helps support the immune system. For immune support, turn up our immune support. Turn up your immune support. Your immune system wants some support. Which are marketed to sick people who are desperate to feel better, but the reality is that large studies have shown them to be no better than a placebo in their ability to mitigate the common cold. In this video, we will discuss those data so that you can save your money. I'm Dr. Nock, PhD scientist, here to help you separate fact from fiction in health and nutrition. Vitamin C and the common cold. Rewind to the 1970s. Disco music, blockbuster movie films like Jaws and Star Wars. Pong became one of the first commercially successful video games. This was also the time of the authoring of a book by Nobel Prize winning scientist Linus Pauling. That book was called Vitamin C and the Common Cold. Now his claims of prevention though were based on his personal experiences with vitamin C as well as studies that happened to agree with his beliefs. His findings were judged as flawed by the vast majority of the scientific community who saw through the bias in his data analysis. He's not a physician, he's not a nutritionist, and I don't think he really knows much about what he's talking or writing about. In fact, Pauling himself wrote that his observations were anecdotal and that he hoped someone would conduct a large-scale study to provide actual evidence over whether vitamin C worked. Unfortunately, just like today, the quality of scientific evidence or the consensus opinion of scientists doesn't really matter as much as flashy media attention. And after Pauling's book was published, interest in vitamin C exploded, which has remained true to this day. The vitamin C market is estimated at over a billion dollars per year and oral supplements are a major part of that market. So let's look at what the data actually say. Researchers conducted a meta-analysis that combined evidence from dozens of separate studies involving a total of over 11,000 subjects. This is the biggest research report to date on this topic. They analyzed two key questions. Number one, whether vitamin C could reduce your risk of getting a cold in the first place. And number two, whether it could reduce your symptom duration or severity. On the first question, they found no difference in the chances of getting a cold among people who did or did not regularly take vitamin C. This data figure from that meta-analysis shows all the studies that tested vitamin C for preventing the common cold in the general public. Each study has its own row and a horizontal black line. Now, if that horizontal black line is totally to the left of the vertical black line, that means the study found that vitamin C did work to reduce risk of a cold. If it crosses over that vertical line, that means there was no statistical difference between vitamin C and a placebo pill. If it was totally to the right of that black line, that would mean that vitamin C actually worsened your risk for a cold relative to a placebo. This data figure is called a forest plot, and it's commonly used in meta-analyses to compare results from many separate studies. As you can see here, basically every study crossed over the black vertical line, indicating no significant difference between vitamin C or a placebo to prevent the common cold. At the very bottom, there's a little black diamond that combines the data from all those studies, and that black diamond is very close to and actually touches the vertical line, indicating no difference between vitamin C and placebo pills when the data were analyzed in aggregate. However, in a sub-analysis shown here, they did find a hidden benefit for certain people, specifically those engaging in intensive physical activities, like including marathon runners, as well as people doing winter activities, like skiers or soldiers in subarctic conditions, which is oddly specific, but was explicitly mentioned in the papers. Those specific groups had about half the risk of getting a common cold if they regularly took vitamin C starting before they got sick. So if you regularly engage in intensive physical activity, perhaps especially in the cold, there may be more upside to vitamin C supplementation for you than there is for the general public. But what about its ability to reduce symptom duration and severity? People who regularly took vitamin C starting before getting sick had a very slightly shorter period of illness, with average reductions in symptom duration of about 8% in adults, about 14% in children. I consider that to be a very small effect size. For example, if you were going to have symptoms for five days, maybe it gets reduced to around four and a half days instead. Now, all of those data so far were for people who took vitamin C all of the time, starting before getting sick. But what about if you only start taking vitamin C after you already have signs of getting sick, like many products are marketed? The meta-analysis analyzed that question as well, in a total of over 3,000 cases, and they found no consistent effect of vitamin C on either the duration or severity of colds in those therapeutic trials. So it does not work at all if you only start taking it once you are sick. And products like Emergency and others are a bold-faced cash grab in the poorly regulated supplement market to take advantage of uncomfortable sick people to the 
tune of hundreds of millions of dollars per year. As a treat, we can now turn to the Joe Rogan experience where he discusses this exact meta-analysis on vitamin C and the common cold with Dr. Paul Saladino, who famously wrote the book on the carnivore diet. Not exactly known for evidence-based medical claims, but let's see how they do with this relatively straightforward paper. What about once someone has a cold? Emergency and all these different vitamin C uh, supplements. This is what they're always claiming, taking it while you have the cold. Yeah, that's what the products are claiming, which as you and I now know, has been shown to not work. Concluded that vitamin C supplementation has no effect on the incidence of the common cold. However, a modest reduction of symptoms was consistently found in reviewed studies. Yes, that's correct. Among people who were taking vitamin C all the time, not just when they got sick. So good while you have it. Maybe while you have it. So if you Maybe have something, it. then jack up the dose. Yeah, no, we have strayed from accuracy. That is simply not what the study was testing at all. Those data were for people who took vitamin C all of the time, not people who took a high dose once they were already sick. The study they showed on screen clearly found no benefit from taking it after you were sick. This goes to show that even if you put a research study up on the screen, even if you highlight keywords, you can still interpret those words very incorrectly, even if you have over 2 million views on that video. So how much vitamin C do you really need to support your immune system? The recommended daily intake is 75 to 90 milligrams, slightly higher, around 120 mg per day if you're breastfeeding. For reference, a single bell pepper has almost double that amount. So if you're eating even a very moderate amount of fruits and vegetables, you're not at risk for vitamin C deficiency. That said, given the low cost of vitamin C and the generally good safety profile at lower doses, if you feel so compelled, you could talk with your healthcare provider and you could test on an individual basis whether vitamin C feels beneficial for you. This is one of those cases where if you take it and you think you feel better, you may not really care whether that's a placebo effect or not, as long as that's not a replacement for seeking actual medical advice when needed. Brief word of warning, high doses of vitamin C can lead to gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea or cramps in some people or even potentially increased risk for kidney stones.